Okay, so here we are in exercise 10-1A, and we're working with cadences. And using only triads in root position and first inversion, compose examples of the following cadences. Each example should include three chords, two cadence chords, plus one chord preceding the cadence chords. Include key signatures and Roman numerals. Okay, so the first one is in A, and we know the key signature is three sharps, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. We're doing a root position IAC. Okay, so the um, both the chords, the five to one, uh, will be in root position, but the um, one chord, uh, the melody, the soprano, will not end on the tonic. It will end on either the third or the fifth chord. Okay, so we can choose. Um, we have the five and the one, and we can choose our own chord here. So, not just do a two five one. So in A major, the two chord is B minor. So, um, and this is a three part. So, I'm going to start up here. There's our B, and the F sharp, and the D. B, D, F sharp is B minor. Okay, so now we have a five chord. And that's going to be E major. So we want that in root position. And there's our root. So we need the third of our chord. The F sharp can move up to the G sharp nicely there. And then there's the fifth of our chord. So the soprano is doing a leap of a minor third. Okay. And now we have our one chord. So that'd be A major. Here's the root. And we need an E. And the C sharp will go nicely there. So, let's see if we have any parallels. B to F sharp is a perfect fifth. It's moving to a major third, so that's just fine. Um, e to B is a perfect fifth, and it's moving to a major third. So that looks good. Three part harmonies are easier sometimes than the four part. Uh, okay, so number four, we're in B minor, and we need the inverted IAC. So it's going to be a five to one. With either one of these chords in an inversion. Okay. So... Let's see. I hope we use a four this time. Okay. And then the key signature for B minor is two sharps relative to D major. Okay. 
Okay, so there we go. And our four chord in B minor would be E minor. So we have E, B, and then we'll double our root. And then we'll put the third of our chord here. Okay, so now we can invert uh, our one chord or we can invert the five chord. Um, let's see. It says to only use first inversion. Okay, so. Our five chord is F sharp major, and the first inversion um, would have an A sharp in the bass. So remember, the A sharp is the leading tone. Okay, so we don't want to double that. Um, so that could create some problems. So, let's see, let me just do root position, five chord. So we've got an F sharp, then the A sharp. And then we're going to need a C sharp. I can do that here. And then we want to double the root of our chord, so we can do that here. Let's see if that creates any parallel, unwanted parallels. We have a perfect fifth here. And that's moving to a major third, so that's good. And we have an octave in the alto and the bass. And that's moving to a fifth, so we're safe there. Now, we're going to need an inverted one chord. Let's make it a 1 6, first inversion. So that's going to be a B minor over D. Okay. So we need a D in the bass. I'll do that there. Now, we can have the A sharp leading tone move up to the root of the chord like it likes to do um, even though it's in an inner voice uh, and then we're going to need a root or chord well we have the root there I'm sorry we're going to need a fifth um, and we have a common tone in the soprano Let's see, in minor first inversion, the triads, composers double the bass or the soprano. So we can double the bass like this. Okay, okay now let's see if that created any problems. Um, oh, it looks good. Okay, that's the inverted IAC. Now, number six, four parts in D minor. We have a plagal cadence. So the key signature for D minor is one flat. 
It's like the relative F major. Right? So um, this is a playable cadence. So we're going to want a four to one. Okay. And we can pick whatever chord we want. Um, this time I'm just going to do a one chord. Okay. So we need a D minor. There's a root, fifth. There's the third of our chord, the F. And then we'll double the root here in the soprano. Okay. So now the four chord is going to be G minor. D, E, F, G, one, two, three, four. So we need G, B flat, and a D. We can do that here. G, and A goes to the B flat. Okay, fifth to a third, that's great. And then we have, uh, we'll double our root here. The alto, and then we have a common tone, the fifth of our chord up here. Okay, so let's see if we have any parallels. It looks good. This fifth is moving to a minor third, and the octave in the soprano and the bass is moving to a fifth in an oblique motion. So now we got to voice the one chord, and we can do that really easily by just moving back to our original voicing. And there we go. Yes, looks good. Okay. So now we have, um, we're in the key of B flat, and we need to do a leading tone IAC. So the leading tone IAC is the seven diminished to one. Okay. So B flat major has two flats. B flat. And E flat. There we go. And we're going to have the seven diminished. All right. And that's most commonly used um, in first inversion. All right. So let's do that. And then we'll go to our one chord. B flat major. So um, the seven diminished six, well, the seven diminished chord in B flat major would be A diminished, A, C, E flat. So in first inversion, it's going to have a C in the bass, right? So to make nice smooth voice leading, we could use the two chord, the C minor, which also has the C in the bass. Right? So let's voice the C minor. There's the root, the fifth, the E flat for our third. And we'll double the root on top here in the soprano. Okay. Now, the seven diminished six, we need to start with the C. Okay. Now we need an A and an E flat. And that was smoothly like that. 
There's a common tone. And we have another common tone. And we just double the bass. And that's what composers most often did with first inversion diminished triads. So that looks good. Um, very smooth, only changing one note. Okay. Now, we're on the one chord, B flat major. And let's do the root. So B flat. Why not just double it here? That's what the leading tone likes to do. And then the E flat can move up the F. The fifth of our chord. And then we need a D to complete the chord. B flat D F. And there are no parallels to be seen here. Oh. Wait a minute. Okay, we have a an A to E flat. And then a B flat to F. So those are fifths, but these are unequal fifths, right? Diminished fifth to perfect fifth. And that's fine as long as it's not involving the bass, right? Which it isn't. It's only involving the tenor and the alto. So we're cool there. We got the complete chord. Okay. And now we are in E minor, and we have the Phrygian half cadence. So E minor, key signature, is one sharp, the F sharp, just like G major, it's relative. Okay. So the Phrygian half cadence is a minor four chord in first inversion to the five chord. Okay. And um, there are two chords that like to go to the four chord um, besides the one. Uh, and that would be the three chord or the six chord. Okay, so the uh, three chord is the mediant, and the six would be the submediant. All right, um, so let's see, the six chord in E minor would be C, um, C major, and then the four chord in E minor is A minor. And since it's in first inversion, A minor C would have A C E, so we would have the C in the bass. So since the sixth chord, the C major, also has the C in the bass, let's try that for some smooth voice leading. So here's the root of our chord. Here's the fifth. And the third, and then got the soprano there, the fifth. So we've doubled the soprano. And now we have the A minor in first inversion. So we have the C. And this G can move nicely up to the A for the root of our A minor chord here. And then we have a common tone, E. And then G moves nicely up to the A. Okay. 
So, that was pretty smooth. Now we change two notes. Hmm. Ooh, with that created parallel octaves in the soprano and the tenor. Okay. So, hmm. What can we do? Well, we already have the fifth of our chord here, right? So, we can double the root of our chord here, right? That looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that, that fixed it. Okay, so now our V chord. Now that will be the B major. Okay, so we need a B. And then If we want to make it, we can keep this common tone. And then that would be a 5 7, right? Because that's the seventh of our chord. And then now we need the third, the D sharp, right? We have to raise the seventh scale degree a half a step from the subtonic to the leading tone, right? Otherwise, this chord would be minor. Okay, so um, now could do the. Um, F sharp. The fifth of the chord here. Let's see if that works. Okay, so we have that's a perfect it's a perfect fourth moving to a major third. And then A to E, that's a perfect fifth. Hmm. Okay. Um, and to A to D sharp, so that's an augmented fourth, that's fine. And then we have A to A in soprano and tenor. So there's an octave uh, moving to a major sixth, A to F sharp. And then I think we're good there. So, okay. And we have three more to go. So, here we go. We have uh, the key of A minor, and we have a deceptive cadence. And it says to be careful because the resolution um, of five to six um, is difficult uh, if you want to avoid unwanted parallels. So let's put our five. And this time we're in A minor, okay? So we're going to have a major sixth chord. Okay. Now, uh, why don't we just start with the one chord? And the key signature for A minor is no sharps or flats, just like the relative C major. And this time we're in three parts. 
So we need an A minor. And let's do the root here. And then our fifth, no, our th yeah, the fifth there. And then our third here. A, C, E. Okay. So, now we go to five chord, and in the key of A minor, A, B, C, D, E, would be E major. Right. So, we need an E, there's the root, there's the third, And there's the fifth. Are we done? Well, no, right? We have to raise the third of our chord. The leading tone. G sharp, right? Okay. Now we're now we're done. Now we have an E major triad. Okay. And there are no parallels to be seen there. So um, now when we're resolving um, the sixth chord, we have to be careful. We're going to be doubling the third. Okay. So. And both these voices are going to move in contrary motion to double the third. Okay. So that's how it looks in a three part harmony. If you wanted to do it in four part, we could. Double the soprano there. Um, and if we wanted to, we could the D here and make this a 5 7. Okay. And then move back to the C there. And then we have complete chord here. Okay. So just some options. All right. So now we're in the key of C and we're going to do a pack. Perfect authentic cadence. So that's going to be five to one. All right. Both in root position. And now we do a two, five, one again. Circle of fifths. So in the key of C, our two chord is D minor. And there's the fifth. And then the F is our third. And we'll double the root. Okay. Now the five chord is G major. Got to be in root position. So there we go there. And the A moves nicely up to the B, the third. Uh, we have a common tone here, the D. And then we'll double the root here. Okay. Let's see if that created any unwanted parallels. We have soprano and bass, an octave, but it's moving to a fifth, so that's good. And then we have a fifth in the bass and tenor, moving to a third, so we're fine there. Now, we need to voice our one chord in root position. Okay, so we gotta have a C there. 
And to be a perfect authentic cadence, we also have to have a C in the soprano. Right? Okay. So the soprano, the melody has to end on Do, the root of our one chord. So now we need a third and a fifth. Um, let's see. Could, uh, that's kind of a stretch. Let's, see. let's just do the. Oops. Let's try this. There's a G. So we were able to, um, this is the leading tone, right? The B, but we were able to frustrate the leading tone um, in an inner voice. Since it's in an inner voice, we were, we were able to move it down. Um, so we have a complete one chord. Um, so otherwise we probably would have had it tripled the root and then had a third chord, okay? So, number 12, we got a half cadence in the key of D. Okay, so the key of D has two sharps, F and C. There we go. All right, so the half cadence is going to end on a five chord. So, why don't we just make it simple? One, four, five. A lot of songs have been made just off those three chords. Alright, so the one chord, D major, let's voice that like this. Okay, and then we need the F sharp, the third of our chord, and then the fifth up here in the soprano. Okay, now our four chord, D, E, F sharp, G, would be G major. Okay, so, got a G here, and we got a common tone, the D there. We don't want to put the B here because that would be cross voicing, right? So let's put it up here in the soprano. It was nicely there. And then the F move nicely, the F sharp move nicely to the G here. Okay. So we've doubled the bass. And let's check for any parallels. There's an octave. That's fine. Okay, D to A is a perfect fifth. And that is moving D to B. Okay, so it's a major sixth. Now D to A in bass and soprano is moving to G to B, major third. Good. Okay, so our five chord, A major. our bass and we want to double the bass so let's try and put our fifth here and then our C sharp up here okay fifth to an octave is just fine and then here we have an octave in the alto and the bass Moving to a fifth, very good. And that's it. Okay, so we're done. All right, so hopefully this is helping and um, you're getting more comfortable with your key signatures and 
the doubling guidelines and little things to watch out for. Um, so I will see you in the next section. Greetings. So here we are um, on part B and now we're uh, studying form. So um, we're to analyze this piece uh, and we're to make a diagram of it um, and we're supposed to include the phrase labels A and B uh, and so on um, depending on what we need and we need to name uh, the form of it and we also need to uh, show the the sentence form here um, with brackets for x and x prime so there's a lot to do with this little piece here uh, so I thought we'd just review um, before we get into it okay so let's review a little bit okay so a period is a formal unit made up of two or sometimes more phrases. Phrases form an antecedent consequent relationship, like a question and answer type relationship. The antecedent phrase has a weaker cadence and it feels open. Like here, we have a half cadence, right? This is the antecedent phrase. And a half cadence feels open. It wants to continue, right? So, um, because it ends on a five chord, not the one. So, the consequent phrase has a stronger cadence and it feels closed. So, this is the consequent phrase. And it ends with a pack. So, that is the strongest type of cadence to end with. Um, so here we have a little diagram of that, um, and this would be a parallel period, um, because the, the melody, the motive is pretty much the same. It's the exact same rhythm, um, with just a little difference here at the end of the notes. Okay, um, so this would be a parallel period, and we have A for the first four bars, ending with a half cadence, and then A prime, because it's parallel, it's very similar, so we put A prime, and we end with a perfect authentic cadence on measure 7 and 8. You have to put 7 and 8 for the 5 to 1, okay? Whereas here, it just ends on measure 4, the 5, okay? So, that's one example. And here we see that periods uh, can be parallel, very similar motivic material, um, especially at the beginning of the phrase like the one we just looked at. And then there could be contrasting. So there's different motivic material or melodic material. Okay. Um, so let's look at this example. Okay, we see um, a melody similar to the last one. It, it, actually, it's just the same as the last one we looked at, the antecedent phrase. And it ends on a half cadence. Now this time, the consequent phrase, look at how different that is, okay? Okay, it's a lot more, uh, it's a lot busier, right? So this would be a contrasting period. So we have A for the antecedent phrase, ending on a half cadence on measure four. And this time we put a B for the consequent phrase because it's different, okay? Different material. So it ends in a pack. It has the same weaker to stronger cadence relationship, okay? And here we have 
the sentence. It's a musical structure of variable size characterized by three parts. The initial idea, the immediate repeat or variation of the initial idea, and then a drive towards cadence. Okay? Um, so you can see we have uh, the original motive, bum ba da da, and then bum ba da da. See, it's the same rhythmically, right? But everything just moves up a step. Okay, so you have the initial idea and then a repeat or a variation of it. Okay, so we'll need to look out for that. That's x, x prime. And the rest is just y. It just drives towards the cadence. Um, and the ratio is often in 1, 1, 2. So we have one bar and another bar and then two bars. Okay. So with this information, we should be able to start our homework. Okay. And so... Let's take a look at this piece by Schumann. Now, what we really need to look at is just the melody, okay? Uh, so, let's check it out. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 ba. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, so let's look at this rhythm closely here. Um, bum, ba, bum, bum, ba, bum, bum. Okay, now look at this. This is very similar here. Take away that little pickup note, and we have ba 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 bum bum. Okay, so you see, that's our initial idea. Okay, these two bars here, and then it just moves up a third. So that's the repeat with a slight variation of the original idea, and. That's the sentence, right? So we would put X and then we would put X prime here. Okay. And then if we look down here, ba, bum, bum, ba, bum, bum. Okay, so does that rhythm sound familiar? Yes, right? It's the same rhythm as we have here. Everything is just moved up a fourth. <laughs> you see that? G to D, F sharp to C sharp. Okay, B flat to F. So, um, this would also be part of a sentence. All right, and here's X prime. Okay. And the rest is just driving towards a cadence. Okay. So there's our sentence structure. Um, so we've done that um, here, right? So now let's check this out here. Um, let's look at the rhythm uh, on the Y section. Okay, so we have. One, two, three, one, 
Okay, so it's very similar, um, right? So it's not contrasting. Um, you know, some of the note choices are a little different down here, but uh, it's it's still considered a parallel period because um, how closely it sounds to the first part. Rhythmically, it's exactly the same. So this is a parallel period. Uh, and then, so this would be A, that would be A prime, and then we have a 5 here, right? So, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So on measure 8, we have a half cadence, all right? And then, um, this is a cadential 6-4, but really this is just acting as a 5 chord. So it's 5 to 1. Now let's check. We are in D minor, and we have uh, an A7, okay, um, because of the G there. Um, and it's in root position. So the five chords in root position, and then the one chord as a D in the bass. So it's also in root position. So it's a five to one cadence. Both chords are in root position. Now it only needs one more thing to make it a perfect authentic cadence. And that is for the soprano to end on Do, the root of the one chord, and it does. So we'll just put um, measure 15 and 16, uh, PAC, okay, so, it's a parallel period, it has the uh, weaker, the antecedent phrase, um, the weaker cadence, and then the stronger cadence on the uh, consequent phrase, so let's um, make a little diagram of this. So the diagram should look something like this. We have parallel period. Okay. Um, So that's the whole period. And let's do each of our phrases. And then we have the antecedent phrase. And then we have the consequent phrase. Okay. And now we just need to put our cadences in. So we had half cadence, and we had a pack there. So let's put our measure here, measure eight. And here we'll put measure 15 and 16. And there's the diagram for that example. Okay, not too bad, right? Well, I hope I'll see you in the next one. Okay, we got one more to analyze. Bye now. Okay, so here we are in number four, and we're to diagram and name the form of this excerpt and copy out any rhythmic motives found in both of the phrases. The progression at X resembles an IAC in what key? What is the relationship between that key and E minor? 
Okay, so let's just look at that right now. So we're in the key of E minor. We have one sharp in the key signature. Now, if we look here, have D, and then we have an F sharp, uh, A, and a C. So that's like a D7. And then here we have a G. Um, so, and it's, um, it's root position, uh, but it is not um, a perfect authentic cadence because the melody, the highest note in the melody is um, on the third of the chord. So it's an IAC like it said, and D to G would be a five to one in the relative major key of E minor, right? Because E minor and G major are relative. They have the same key signature, but they start on a different tonic. So um, that is the relationship between those two keys, right? They're relative. Okay, so now let's look at the example. And um, we can see here right off the bat, we have um bum 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 and then bum 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 something like that it's a little different here at the end um but if you look closely this rhythm all the way um, up to this point is the same. You have a series of eighth notes, and then you have the triplet here, and then um, the dotted um, 16th to a 32nd here so since the rhythmic um, motive is so similar uh, I would say that this is a parallel period again okay so um, we have the antecedent phrase a and then a prime and then we have uh, the let's look at the cadences. So we have a five. Okay, we're ending on the B major. Um, so that's a half cadence. And then we have a seven diminished um, in the second inversion to a one. So. 7 to 1, this would be like an inverted leading tone IAC. Okay, so uh, 1, 2, 3, measure 4, 5, 6, and measure 7 and 8, we have the IAC. So this is still the weaker cadence to the stronger cadence relationship. Okay. So if we were to diagram it out, it would look similar to the last one. All right, let's do our phrases. Four. We have the half cadence. It measures seven and eight. We have 
the IAC. Okay. So, the next step, we need to copy out any rhythmic motives found in both of the phrases. Okay. And I already did that here. Okay. So you can see this is a rhythmic clef, alright? Not concerned with any pitches here, just the beats. So we have um, starting on measure one here, um, the four eighth notes, dun, 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 dun. and then we have the dun 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 so those are the same down here. And then we have four eighth notes right here. Um, well, actually, we can take that one out. Because this is actually a 16th tied to a 32nd. So the, the similarities these sections okay so that's notated up here and that's all they ask so I'll see you in the last section a little review um, and then we'll be done okay okay so here we are in the last section part C review where to notate the chords in the keys and bass positions indicated. So we're given a key and then a chord to voice with the inversion symbols nearby. Okay. Um, and they're all in treble clef. So that's nice. Uh, so we have the E major. Uh, I'm going to use accidentals and not key signatures. Um, there's so little space to work with all these. Anyway, um, the key signature would probably just get in the way. Um, so, let's start with the 1 6 in E major. So, that would be an E in first inversion. So, it's going to have a G sharp in the bass. We're going to have E over G sharp. that. Now, B flat, we have a six chord and it's a minor seventh. Okay. So the sixth scale degree in B flat major is G. So we need to build a G minor seventh. Let's build our super snowman here. All right, for the seventh chord, and I need to flat the third of our chord. G minor seventh. Now we're in G major, and we have a four chord in second inversion. So this is a triad, six four, and in the key of G, the C uh, major is the four chord. So we need a C with a G in the bass. A G. A, a, a. Okay. Now, D major, a two chord. It's a seventh chord in second inversion. Okay, so the two chord in D major is E minor. So we need an E minor 7 over B. Okay, so B, 
and then let's build our triad E G and then the seventh of our chord we can put right here okay so let's see that looks kind of sloppy um, you do it as quarter notes okay That looks a little clearer, right? You can see the 4-3 inversion. All right. And now we're in F minor, and we're to do a 6 chord. So, the 6th scale degree in F minor is D flat, and the 6th chord is major, so we're going to build a D flat major. Build our snowman. And we need a D flat and an A flat. There we go. Now D minor, seven diminished six five. So in D minor, the um, seven diminished chord is built off of the leading tone. So that would be C sharp. All right, a C sharp is half a step below the D. So that would be our leading tone. And it's a fully diminished seventh chord in first inversion. Okay, so it's gonna be a C sharp, a fully diminished seventh over E. Now, so we don't get confused I want you to realize that each of these notes, okay, it has to be C, E, G, and B, some kind of B. So um, in root position, you would have C sharp, E, G, and then a B flat, okay? So it's not an A sharp. This is one occasion where you get to have a sharp and a flat in the same chord. Um, so now we need to invert it. Let's make that E a little clearer. And then put our C here. go okay now we have a flat major the three chord this minor it's in root position a flat B flat C so C minor okay now, E flat major, the seven half diminished seven. Okay, so that's root position. So the uh, seventh scale degree in E flat major would be D. So we need to build a super snowman from D. And we need a half diminished seventh. So this is a minor seventh. So to make it half diminished, we just flat the A. D, F, A flat, C. If we put a C flat, then that would make it fully diminished. Okay. All right. So that's the diatonic seventh chord in um, E flat major. Now we have F sharp minor, uh, five chord, 
in third inversion, okay? So the seventh of the chord is going to be in the bass. So let's find out the root. And a fifth up from F sharp would be C sharp, right? So we need a C sharp. Um, dominant seventh chord. Okay. Um, and so let's build our the super snowman. Okay. Now if C E G is C major, then we need to sharp everything. C sharp, E sharp, G sharp would be C sharp major. Okay? And that's root position. So now let's put it in the right inversion. And we'll put our B natural there. Okay? Okay, so now we're in A major. And we need to do a four chord, um, and it's a four major seventh. So A, B, C sharp, D, one, two, three, four. So we need to build a D major seventh in root position. So here's our super snowman. That's a minor seventh. So to make it a major seventh, we need to Sharp the three and sharp the seven. Okay, and we're done. So, thank you for watching, and um, I hope your theory uh, experience is a good one. And I hope these videos are helping. So, see you in the next one. Bye now.